Hey everyone, I'm back again with another developer update for the Soul Device 2. Uh, last time I covered the Soul Device itself, and I recommend watching that video first, as I'll be building off of the topics introduced in that video, pun intended. But today's update is about the Smelt Device, the second device the player gets in the game's progression. And this is the device. So the player can swap between devices just anytime they want to by using the scroll wheel. And if you don't have a scroll wheel, you can use the shift key or uh, keys one and two are mapped to the soul device and smelt device respectively. So uh, without further ado, let's head into this room I have built. This room is based off the room in the previous update, but I have made some modifications for the smelt device and its specific mechanics. So for starters, I'm going to talk to this NPC stand in. And it's going to unlock the battery pack. Now the battery pack is special in that it basically supersedes the player's health bar. So basically the player uses their health to produce um, things that come out of the devices like the beam from the soul device and what the smelt device does. And the smelt device shoots out arcing projectiles that are hot that land and then cool and create platforms. And you'll notice my battery's only gone down just by a little bit. So the battery is kind of a cover for the player's health. It will always be used before the player's health when building, and it is 10 times more efficient than the player's health, and that it will deplete visibly 10 times slower than the player's HP. Uh, so it's significantly better to use the battery than it is to use the player's health. And you'll notice the battery is only going down as I use this, um, but I'll, I'll get into how to charge the battery in just a little bit. So basically the smelt device, it has arcing shots. You can see my little targeting reticle moving around and the arc of the shot depends on how far the mouse is from the player. Uh, and this is when you're not in force mode. So by default, you can arc it with the mouse being close or you can arc it with the mouse being far. Or if you press the F here toggle it from the menu, you'll notice my targeting reticle is now over on the wall. Force mode has been activated and this indicator over here on the heads up display has disappeared. This means that you will always be firing out at full force. So that basically this treats it as if the mouse is at the furthest distance that it cares about. And so this, just like this old device, creates platforms that the player can walk on. Um, and now I'll talk about the smelt device's right click function. This is what you get when you unlock the smelt device as well as its primary function. So the right click is grind. This is going to have an associated animation on the smelt device in the final version, but does not have it right now. What grind does is grind allows you to, well, grind. And what this does is when you have an object that you can grind like smelt nodes or like these boulders here, you can grind things up and convert it into battery. So if I sit on this rock here and I grind it, you'll notice my battery is going up. And I can grind this rock too and recover some battery. And so you can do this with smelt nodes. So let me play some of these. I can just grind these up and convert them back into battery. Although bear in mind that if I have like this huge bridge and I grind an earlier node, I lose out on all the previous nodes. But you don't just have to grind smelt nodes. Smelt nodes are a type of soul node. They're just placed differently and you can grind soul nodes too. So I have a little bit of battery here. Uh, this is not a sustainable way to get battery because obviously making soul nodes and smelt nodes uh, causes you to use battery and you only get about what you use, so you can't infinitely charge your battery using this. Uh, there is a way to infinitely charge your battery with one of the later devices, but I'll talk about that when I get to it. Uh, so that's the basics of the smelt device. So let's move on into the next room. So the first thing you'll notice about this room is that the entire room is made of crystal and the door is covered in ice. What this means is that the soul device can't actually build in this room. It'll just reflect off of everything. Uh, so you can get around this by using the smelt device. Um, so what you can do is you can fire smelt the, uh, you can fire smelt nodes into the floor, uh, and you can just build platforms like this, but you'll notice the smelt device has a significantly higher strain on HP than the soul device. So if I do this instead, and then I just soul device off of the smelt node, it's pretty straightforward. Now I want to get over there to the switch because it's in the same place it was last time. And I'm going to go ahead and grind this up for some battery. I'm going to drop a, a smelt node here and then just build up off of it with the soul device. 
Now, I don't want to have to platform all the way over there, so I'm going to try on force mode. I'm going to aim this, and my targeting reticle shows up there. And I'm going to soul build off of that. And the other thing you'll notice is that some of these walls are made of crystal, but some of these walls are just coated in ice. So even though ice is reflective, you can melt ice with this melt of ice because it's hot. And then the soul eraser, the soul eraser beam actually erases smelt nodes as well. So now I can just soul build off of this wall. So this uh, fall is just the same as it was last time, but uh, to make things a little bit easier, I can do this with the ice wall or the, the crystal wall. All right. So this time I'm going to talk to this NPC and I'm going to buy only the quick build for the soul device, but these are the upgrades for the smelt device. So the typical is smelt shot, launch a ball of molten matter. So this is your basic thing. It shoots arcing projectiles that melt things. The second upgrade is smelt shotgun, which shoots five smaller orbs. Um, I'll get into why that's important later. The third one is heat wave, which is exclusive for melting things, but it is the most powerful way of melting things, which I'll cover in a later video. Um, as well, it's very is it, it's very cheap to use. It's also very cheap to purchase. The upgrade cost is five. And the last one is helium shot, uh, which is a returning feature, a returning reference from the first game um, that costs forty upgrade material. Uh, which so the default is twenty for upgrades, as you can see with the soul device. So this is actually more expensive, and there's a reason for that because it's very powerful. And then of course the smelt device can also grind up certain objects and convert them into stored energy. So closing the menu. So you'll notice the appearance of the smelt device has now changed. This is a reference to the first game. When you get the helium upgrade, this is the appearance it takes. So when you purchase the helium upgrade for the smelt device, it takes on this appearance instead of the default. So you'll notice, j just like last time, there's a turret in this room guarding a switch, but I've moved the switches. So I need to open this hatch here in order to hit that switch, which unlocks the door. And you'll notice that a uh, hitbox up there is moving around. That is a, a character enemy. So I haven't designed the way they look yet, but that is the character's hitbox and they have their health bar above their head. So what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to build up to this enemy and they're going to notice me and they are going to start shooting bullets at me. And you'll notice this is rapidly decreasing my health. So what can I do about this? Well, there's two ways to deal with enemies. The first way is with the soul device. Um, well, actually every device has a way of dealing with enemies, but the soul device is your primary way of dealing with enemies early in the game. So what you can do is you can solidify them. If you hit them with the soul device enough, they'll become solid and they'll begin to suffocate. You'll notice they're, they're slowly taking damage over time, but this is not a very sustainable way of dealing damage to them. So what you can do is with the smelt device, shoot them. And you'll notice this deals lots of damage very quickly. And so this is where the second function of the, of the smelt device comes in smelt shotgun. Uh, worth noting, though, is that even if I had battery, uh, the bullets would be going directly to my health. Um, what the smelt shotgun does is this shoots out five smaller uh, pellets um, that have semi-random trajectories based off the main trajectory. So the targeting reticle is just kind of an average of where they'll come out. And these have decay significantly faster than sm normal smelt nodes. And if I turn force node off, then they can do like this, and it can be a lot of fun. Uh, but basically, uh, this, you'll notice the enemy like follows me if I leave too far, but backs away if I get too close. Uh, the smelt shotgun is your fastest way of dealing damage to enemies if all five pellets hit. Otherwise, if you're hitting with like three or less, you might as well just be using regular smelt shots. But basically, I can just fire these into the enemy and the enemy will die. And they explode it into um, little collectibles, which I'll get into in a later video. Beep, beep. Oh, the turret saw me. Oh, I guess that's a minor glitch that uh, there's technically not a wall, right? in here so the turret collision line straight between the walls i'll have to look into that later and i just grind up that node while i was going up so oh whoops grind up these smaller nodes if i happen to build off one of these smaller nodes and then it decays it will destroy the entire platform so you got to be careful with stuff like that so i'll hit this switch i'll take the elevator back down and you notice this hatch is now open and the other thing is with the soul device, you can't actually solidify things like the turret, um, but you can deal direct damage to it with the smelt device. Uh, the smelt shots can also block bullets mid air, but if they take like three bullets, the shot itself will be destroyed before it hits a wall or anything. So if I stand here and shoot at this, I won't be taking any damage. And you'll notice that the turret just broke. That is now a broken turret. 
Um, and if you were to save the game and load your save file, that would not come back and neither would the enemy. They would stay dead. So now I can flip the switch and the door up there will be unlocked. And real quick, I want to grab this. And so yeah, I'll be swapping between the smelt device and the soul device because the two are meant to be used in tandem. The soul device is still going to be your best device for just quick building like that. Uh, but the smelt device is still pretty good. So I'm going to do... Do that so I have it nice way down. Then I'm going to arc some smelt shots. For demonstration purposes. Oof, didn't know if I was going to make that. Yeah, typically your soul device is going to be your best device for building. And you may have noticed right there, I kind of walked off the edge and the player kind of started to free fall before I jumped. I have a very slight grace period installed where if the player walks off a ledge and still presses jump, they will still jump. Uh, it makes the game just easier to play. So now I'm actually going to swap to what I was doing. Oh, I actually don't have uh, a rupture, eruption build. Never mind. If I'm swapping out names pretty frequently on the, uh, the functions, it's because I haven't actually memorized what I called them. I basically just refer to them based on what they do. All right, so that's close enough. So I'm just going to land and push this button. So I have changed up this room. This room is now full of ice. It is a solid wall. So what am I going to do? Well, um, this is made up of a tile set of ice. So you'll notice that each of these is made up of little squares. So a single shot from the smelt device can handle three of these. Or if I use uh, the shotgun mode, each of the five shots can handle one. So this will take them out five at a time. But this is still rather inefficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind up this and get a little bit of battery. And then I'm going to swap to heat wave. So this is not what it will look like in the final version. This is just a hitbox. It will have like some nice little effects coming out of heat shooting out of the device, but this will instantly melt anything it touches. And it's very, very cheap and efficient to use. So now I have made my way through. So you notice it's not using much HP um, and it eats through it very slowly. So this puzzle here is identical to the way it was last time with the exception that the ceiling is no longer made of crystal. So I can't reflect a soul beam off of it. So what I can do instead is with the smelt device, if I turn off force mode and I arc the hit the targeting reticle so it lands there and I fire two shots. There we go, it is now blocked the laser. So this is an example of some of the puzzle solving that's gonna be in the game with the device. And then I still need to get rid of those so that this wall goes away and I can just erase those with the soul device. I'm going to collect my next reward of grinding up this rock. All right. So in this next room, you'll notice that these rocks look different from the other ones. They're much more solid looking. Uh, that's because they are. These are solid boulders. So uh, these will be in the way of the player several in several places in the game. But what you can do is, like the regular boulders, you can just grind them up. Uh, and you'll notice this does still charge my battery. Um, and there will be several objects like this in the game where you will grind them up and then they will not respawn. Uh, so it's like a one-time deal. Uh, and you'll notice I have now fully charged my battery from this one room. And there's still more boulders to go. But uh, just as last time, this is the end of this area for testing, the sol for testing the smelt device. But wait, there's more because I totally forgot to talk about the most powerful thing in your arsenal should you choose to unlock it, the helium mode. So basically with the soul device, you have the quick build mode where if you middle click or press C uh, by default, uh, you come up with this little icon and you can quickly build off of any surface and it gives you an indicator and this is very powerful for building quickly in complex shapes. Well, the soul device has something equally powerful that uh, I mentioned earlier is very costly for unlocking, but if you middle click and activate quick build with this, you can place a node basically anywhere. And then this node doesn't last very long, but you can fully build off of it with other devices. And that's what I mean about it not lasting very long. Uh, and if you happen to be standing where it is when it is supposed to land and be in spot, it will break itself. So you need to be careful with this. So you can functionally infinitely platform with this very easily. Uh, but you need to be careful because it is a rounded surface and you can slide off of it pretty easily. Um, but yeah, so then if I do this, I can... Oh. 
Yeah, but it doesn't last very long, so you need to be careful with it. Uh, it also, because it moves so slowly, takes longer than other things, so it's often better to just, you know, build your way like that and then just do the thing. But yeah, um, it can also block enemy projectiles like bullets um, and do stuff like that. So it is a powerful tool, but only in certain circumstances and also only if you have patience. So yeah, that about covers everything the smelt device can do. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next developer update.